Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Haley Bassett. I'm the executive director of Arts Northeast. And we're grateful to be visiting today in Doig River First Nation traditional territory. Uh, we're here today with our Arts Northeast artist in residence, Samantha Wigglesworth. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, to discuss her new series, uh, Vulnerably Visible. Um, her show is opening at the Dawson Creek Art Gallery on September 8th, so definitely check that out. And yeah, today we're going to discuss Sam's practice as well as the development of this series and move on to a canvas building and stretching demo. So uh, Sam, tell us about your background. Absolutely. Um, bear with me, I wrote it down. Um, so my name is Samantha Wigglesworth. I am a local uh, BC Canadian artist who grew up in Fort St. John. Uh, I started practicing art from a very young age. I started by getting oil painting lessons from a local Bob Ross instructor um, from the ages of nine to 16. Uh, in high school, I really found my voice in the local community uh, with help from my friends and a school administrator, and of course, the community. I helped start the first ever Pride Walk uh, event, which is still going as an annual event. After graduation, I moved down to Abbotsford to start taking my BFA at UFE, uh, which was truly an eye-opening experience. Um, having a new perspective outside of my conservative hometown inspired a new direction. In my first year, I took a figure painting class where you paint or draw a live nude model uh, in front of you. Uh, these works are just focused on form and the essence rather than detail. Uh, this is a very new perspective from the landscapes I had done in the past, and I was hooked. <laughs> this is what inspired me to do my first portrait painting series, as I uh, could never just do one of anything. I did a series. <laughs> it was my second portrait series, however, when I had this moment that I had painted a hand elegantly resting under uh, the chin, mm -hmm. and the hand wasn't so realistic to the point of hyper-realism, um, but it was still realistic from a distance, but if you got up, it had what I call bold brushstrokes, right? It's, it's a brushstroke of confidence. Mm -hmm. You leave that mark, then, you know, you make it, you leave it. Um, and that moment, to me, is what stuck with me, and I've been with portraiture ever since. Um, to add to this, this is also the time where I really experimented with adding 3D elements to my paintings. Uh, this started with the simple idea I ran by my professor saying, could I add jewelry and flowers physically to the canvas to add a textural element? And he said something along the lines of, why not? <laughs> if you have the reason to why you're doing it, there are no limits. Um, now, he said there were no limits. I pushed them. <laughs> I really pushed them. I added 3D everything. I added so much jewelry and so many flowers. And I, you know, you get a new idea, you get really, really excited about it. And I definitely, I pushed it. I pushed the limits, right? Um, so I did, you know, that, that first series, I had, you know, the eight. I really pushed that. Honed it in a little bit more for the second series, but not really. Um, and then COVID hit. So I had to move back home um, during COVID and my professor challenged me to really focus in, not only on slowing down my practice because I was painting like a madman, <laughs> um, but also don't rely on as many 3D elements, and like make it more purposeful, right? And so I did that and you know, Having come back home, I started working on Spectrum. So that, you know, I, I started creating that series of works and that's kind of what inspired that. Um, and I had that show in July of 2021. Um, that was my first ever gallery show. Um, <laughs> and um, Spectrum is a depiction of different genders and sexualities and what they can look like. Um, this was done specifically to show my hometown the representation I never saw growing up. Um, now, I have been very fortunate uh, as I've had a tremendous amount of opportunities to showcase my art. Um, and after this Artist in Residence show in September uh, at the Dar Dawson Creek Art Gallery, that'll make 15 gallery shows 
since July of 2021. Um, five solo shows and 10 group exhibitions, which is crazy. I cannot begin to <laughs> say how grateful I am for that many opportunities. Um, and it's still going. I have one, I have another show already planned for Abbotsford to show Spectrum again. Awesome. And I've gotten to go to Wells, like it's, it's starting to, yeah, branching to out. branch out and, oh my God, that's so exciting to me. <laughs> um, now on to the Artist in Residence show. Um, so uh, now on to my next show and the reason I'm here today, uh, I am this year's Artist in Residence from uh, Arts Northeast. Um, the title of the show is Vulnerably Visible. Um, the idea came from the fact that each person has many different versions insides of themselves. Some you are willing to share with everyone, others only to a select few. I feel as though um, through portraiture, it can be a window into this unseen side or sides. Though my recent explore, through my recent exploration of my own mental health and rediscovering things about me personally, my goal with this series was that I wanted to explore some of the different facets of myself. I wanted to be truly vulnerable, and when creating works in which I really had to push myself to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Through the use of only colored lights, I stripped away my base identity and brought forward a new way to emphasize these versions and perceptions of myself. It felt important for me to do this as a portrait artist, um, to do it for myself before I asked my models to be as vulnerable with me. Mm. You know, I, if I can't put myself in their shoes, I can't ask them to do it, right? And by getting this opportunity, it facilitated me exploring this, right? Um, now, I have worked on many new skills <laughs> for this series of works. Um, the main one going back to my own photography. So with, with photography, I did a bit of my own photography in university and just kind of dabbled into it. And then with COVID, I could not, you know, facilitate having models. And so I used a lot of royalty-free images. And now I want to get back into photography and it's hard going back into something. I, I kind of forgot what I was doing. <laughs> and um, what better and more willing model than yourself? I will always make time. <laughs> and sometimes I don't want to, and I will. <laughs> um, oh, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so, um, yeah, who's a more willing model than yourself? Um, to first photograph um, vulnerabilities is a difficult thing, though, um, even though it was just me by myself in my room. Um, I wanted these works to be authentic as possible. So every expression you see of a negative emotion is a true expression of that emotion. You know, um, you know, I have I have my anxiety one over here, but I I have two more that kind of dive a little bit more deep. I have one that shows depression and one that shows my sadness. You know, and they're they're a lot to look at. They they truly show these emotions, and I was genuinely depressed while I'm taking the photo and that's mm -hmm. a very hard line to to teeter right mm -hmm. um, but it did make for a very powerful painting um, I mean it photographing these negative emotions uh, is not the hard part however um, painting them and sitting with them for around 40 hours uh, which is what it takes to complete one of these works on average that's the hard part, <laughs> you know. Um, both painting and knowing these sides of myself, they usually keep hidden from the general public. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not censoring anything, you know, other than painting them in these bright colors, right? I'm, I'm doing that though to strip away my base identity, mm. right? I. I wanted to strip that away and bring in these bright colors also to show different emotions. And like each color is very methodically picked out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna kind of spoon feed those, those ideas though, because you know, it is still 
I want people to sit with these and, and understand them for themselves, but yeah. um, they are chosen for a reason, yeah. right? But, you know, I'm not censoring out my acne, you know, because I get acne because of my anxiety, because I'm stressed, right? And like, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this one, this one to me is the most vulnerable. So I have a lot of um, um, anxieties, but I also have a lot of sensory issues that have come up, um, especially in this last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I have um, ticks from my anxiety. They, they kind of look like Tourette's. And um, sometimes that involves um, me getting stuck, hitting myself in the head. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is here, is, you know, I'm, I'm ticking, I'm hitting myself in my head, and this in my mouth here is what's called a sensory chew. Um, from the knowledge I have about them is that they're mainly meant for autistic children, but anybody can use them. It's just silicone um, that you chew on that's safe. Um, and for me, it helps ground me into reality, right? And kind of snap me out of this moment or help snap me out of this moment because sometimes they persist, you know? I have my noise-canceling headphones on playing music. That's another thing that helps. But 